Hey, Hickok 45. Doesn't get a lot more fun, does it, than plinking with the old 22 long rifle cartridge out of a Model 60 Marlin. Let's do it. Two liter. We're going to start with you, buddy. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. Oh, I see a pot. Ooh, I see another one. Nice, nice. Ooh, a little bitty pot. You see, there's another little bitty one right there. I think. Yeah, smoke aim. <laughs> nice. Oh yes. Oh, the action stayed open. Pretty cool. Model 60 Marlin. All right. It's been a while, or actually never on. <laughs> never had in the compound. So we finally got our hands on a Model 60 Marlin. This is, uh, I guess you could say, uh, well, let's not get into that argument, but two of the most popular 22 semi-automatic rifles, of course, are the Marlin Model 60 and then the Ruger 1022, I guess. And there are some other really good ones, uh, but uh, these are a couple of the classics. This is one of the classics. This is uh, this one is vintage 1984. And uh, that's kind of an interesting time for the Model 60 Marlin, uh, since you asked. It, uh, this one still has the, the 22 uh, inch barrel on it and the full length magazine, you know, which they went away from in the mid to late 80s uh, as a result of some of the New Jersey uh, laws, assault rifle laws, right? So there's no telling how many lives have been saved by that, as John pointed out, uh, you know, since they reduced the capacity on the Marlin Model 60 from 18 to to what 14 and so it just untold probably thousands of lives have been changed but anyway this is one of the older ones that uh eh, not the oldest not very old because this gun's been around since uh well you actually i didn't look up when it uh when it came about but uh, it's a marlin model 60 so uh, let's guess when 1960 yes you're right actually it was just kind of a further uh, evolution of i think the model 99 uh, so in uh, around 1960, they dubbed it the 1960 or the Model 60, 61, long in there. So this is a uh, a cool gun. It really is. Uh, I've always liked it, and I I have to confess uh, to having had one a long time ago. Uh, my father bought me one of these from Western Auto in about 1961 or 62, long in there, and it was under the name of Revelation. Marlin made them for Western Auto. And uh, I let it get away. Uh, yeah, I should be kicked uh, about 80 times for that. I'll tell that story some other time, maybe. And I just have never replaced it because of that, because uh, I was so stupid and, and let it go and let it get away. But uh, in fact, I did a recent search to try to find that specific firearm and, uh, and came up short on it. But I ran across this at a gun show recently, and I decided uh, for about the last year, I've decided, okay, I'm not going to be able to find my old gun. So I'm gonna acquire another one, but I'd rather have an older one if I could find one that was more like it. And so this was a pretty cool find uh, recently because again, it's that one it's in that uh, transitional period in a way, it's got the bolt lock back. It holds 18 rounds. And uh, you know, it's just got some of the correct newer features I wanted. And yet it has the long barrel and the long magazine. Pretty cool. And I shouldn't be gabbing without uh, loading, should I? You know, you've got your tubular magazine. Now, you know, it's definitely empty. You always want to look into the chamber uh, very carefully. Make sure there's not a, a round hung up on the bolt or in the chamber or in there anywhere. It's just definitely unloaded. Because one thing about a tubular magazine, you, and it always bothers me because I try to be safety conscious, you, you're putting your hand out here kind of in front of the muzzle in a way, uh, especially taking that out, putting it back in. But you load it, you know, in right directly into the end of the tube here almost. And uh, this one holds, it will hold 18. Now I put the bolt back when I load, so it just holds 17. Uh, if you have the bolt forward, I think it'll hold 18. But like big difference, big deal, right? And uh, they just slide in. And now if you're addicted to one of the, uh, you know, detachable box magazine 22s, I know this seems archaic to you maybe if you've never had one. You think, wow, what a pain. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I kind of like these. There's something special about them. Some of my favorite 22s have tubular magazines. And I don't know, it's kind of like a revolver or something, I guess. Let me just stick this back in. And it has a spring in it. And of course, so the rounds, you know, are actually inside this tube right now with that spring pushing on them. Okay. And we have pressure now. Now what you do, then you release the bolt and you release it like this. Push the little bolt release. Now that did not put one in the chamber, but when I bring it back the next time, it will. And there's your safety right there. Okay, push across bolt safety, your mag, uh, bolt release. So let's put one in the chamber, put my ears on. And I do have a little trouble seeing the sights on this. I'll have to tell you, I, I definitely have a little bit of an alibi. <laughs> uh, but I don't, I don't think I really want to put a red dot on or anything. I don't know. Maybe a scope someday. Who knows? But these are cool guns. We'll go on over there. See, I don't know if I'll be able to hit anything, if I can see the sights well enough. But let's try the red plate. Okay, it's big enough. <laughs> Let's try that little bitty pig over there to the left of the propane tank. Oop, either hit him or shook him off. And I see a pot. And I happen to know there's a couple of uh, empty paint cans in it. So if we can hit it. <laughs> that went well. All right, killed the cinder block too. Well, let's put one on the gong. For... <laughs> cool. Oh man, it's like going home. I can't tell you how many hours, uh, you know, uh, you have seen the bolt action 22 with the scope on it that uh, was my very first gun that dad passed down to me. But then uh, with one of these, uh, in 1962, 63, walking through the farm, the family farm, and shooting one of these. I, I recall so many times, a pocket full of uh, cartridges, walking, and again, let me double check here. We have no rounds anywhere here before I start putting my hand up. But I remember, uh, you know, having this thing under my arm, and I remember having to take my gloves off because it was really cold up in Kentucky, and, uh, you know, and just, I'd, I'd get that out like that, and just leave it there and I just load it, you know, as I'd walk around maybe or stop and then be back in action. Just plinking on the farm just uh, so many times. And we would, uh, we would drive the tractor because you could drive a tractor at any age. We had this tractor, old red Billy Ford, that would fly. It had a two-speed transmission. It would go about, I don't know, 35, 40 miles an hour. We'd run down about two miles to the corner grocery store. Was old time stores, you know, and uh, sold groceries and drinks and that kind of stuff. But it, well, I mean, it was actually a market, what you consider a market uh, for those days. And they actually sold 22 ammunition. And uh, it was uh, what was it? Seemed like it was a dime or 15 cents a box or something. You know, you'd get shorts, longs, or long rifles, and uh, we'd come back and and shoot. I mean, that was the life. Now, so again, it, it, it should have held 17 there. Now, if I let the bolt down, I could take that out and put another one in. I'm not gonna do that. It might hold 18 anyway, I don't know, big deal. Uh, so right now we have the magazine tube filled and uh, we have nothing in the chamber. But the thing I like about these, there's something kind of special. As much as I like detachable magazine gun, you know, I've got a bunch of them, right? You see them in videos all the time. There's something cool about a rifle like this. It's like, this is a real rifle. I get that feeling when I hold the Garand. You know, the Garand is, is it doesn't have a magazine hanging down here. Uh, it's just, you got the round, even though it's just eight, you know, the rounds are in the gun. And there's just something kind of neat about that, you know. And plus the length of this, this, you really get the feel. This is a real rifle. I mean, you really do, and it feels good. And these are famous for being very accurate, by the way. Uh, I mean, you know, we don't get into big accuracy argument versus the competition because, you know, most guns are more accurate than we shoot them. But the micro groove rifling that Marlin came up with, uh, gosh, I think that was in the 50s or something, 
is is supposed to be really accurate. It's a it's a uh, instead of just whatever three or four grooves in the rifling in the barrel, it's like 16, and they're more shallow. So you know, micro smaller. So the the grooves, the rifling is not cut nearly as deep, and there's more of them. And it doesn't, it supposedly does not deform the bullet as much. And there's just more of them to grab the bullet and spin it. Uh, so there, since there are more of them, I guess, it doesn't have to, to get as good a bite on them and cut as deeply into the lead. And I don't know, it's, it's well known for being very accurate. All right, let's put one in the chamber. And take some more shots. Maybe here locally. Like right there. <laughs> right, fun, fun gun. <laughs> cool. Oh, I see a soft drink. I saw a soft drink. Who else? Who else here? Let's try Mr. Propane Tank over there. <laughs> oh, empty. I thought it malfunctioned. You know, it has not malfunctioned with me. Uh, you know, whenever you buy a used gun, you get what you get. Let me show you something about it here. It, uh, it's uh, easy to take down. Let's see, let's make sure there's nothing in there. Close the bolt. You take off a couple of screws. It's pretty easy to clean. I, in fact, I did it this morning because I had not taken it totally apart and taken the bolt out. And uh, just thought, well, let's do it. Make sure there's not a lot of grit in there somewhere. It's, didn't appear to be, but uh, it was a little dirty. You take these two screws out, and the the whole barrel assembly, the action, everything, the receiver comes out. If you don't drop screwdrivers, that's what I get. I should never drink before videos, right? You know that's a joke. Okay, there we go. And you just pull this out, and that's a. Uh, I think the very first ones had a walnut stock, but uh, shortly after that, they went to a birch, and I think this is a birch, birch or beech, birch, I think. I uh, I can always confuse those two trees. The uh, or w <laughs> This is, I think, birch that's been finished to look like walnut because the grain doesn't appear to be walnut to me. If you disagree, you know, I'd be happy to discover it's walnut, but I think it's just birch that's been stained to, to look like walnut, like a lot of people do. And the, whoa, there's the action. And it's pretty simple to, to take apart, take this little pin out, to lose it out on the range here. Lift this up, these little ears hold that, and there it is. So that part you really don't have to clean much. It doesn't get too dirty except for the, the feed ramp here in the throat. That, uh, I'd take a toothbrush and hit that. With some alcohol, generally not, uh, not, not oil, because that uh, 22 ammo is so dirty. You see how dirty that is already. And uh, that's one of the reasons that semi-automatic 22s tend to malfunction after a while. And you see one thing I did not do, I should have done. I should have taken the magazine tube out. Uh, didn't do it. Now I won't take the bolt out, but you, you pull, pull back on it and you take the handle off and you just lift it up and the spring you know, is holding and then it just comes right out, okay? And then uh, like I did this morning and then you just clean, you know, well, there I go, I'm doing it anyway, all right. So you just, just see that just comes right out and you put it back in the same way. I want the, well, let's just go ahead and take it out. <laughs> okay, so there's your bolt. And this one might need a new spring. It's been, I don't know, seems to function okay, but that thing is a little bent. I can see why it is because it's a little awkward the way you, you put it. I did notice there was a little rust inside the bolt there. I really cleaned that as best I could. And uh, let's put that back in. Let's not put it upside down. Yeah. Anyway, you can see it's it's really it's really simple. You know, you clean that up and then put this back in. I say simple now. I'll probably struggle with it. Didn't struggle this morning. Okay. I think I'll probably order. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't go up in every far at all. That's right. You know, this is sad. I don't remember really taking mine apart very often when I was a kid, when I had one of these things. Uh, I don't I don't remember. I guess I did, but I, I don't really remember taking this bolt out and cleaning it well. Maybe Dad did, although I doubt that. Uh, okay, stand up in there. There it goes. 
You can tell I haven't had one of these for a while. Clutch around with it a little bit here. The screwdriver when all else fails and a hammer. And I'll take some of that pressure off. There we go. There we go. Alright. And there's the bowl handle back in. And we'll just set this back in there. Now normally while I had this out, I'd put a toothbrush on that and clean that, that throat there. Nice access to it. Classic firearm, that's for sure. They've, I think there's over 11 million of these things that were made. So a couple of them around. Like I said, I should have taken the tube out there. But I didn't do it. It's back in there. The screws back in. Always uh, get some good screwdrivers. You know they're where they're worth their weight in gold. Really, these are grace, I guess. Just get some good gunsmithing screwdrivers. Not that uh, you or I maybe are a gunsmith, but uh, don't booger up the screws in your firearms. It's it's cool to have the original screws with a gun that you've had for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, someday not have to have replaced them all because you uh, you just ground them up screwdriver slips out of it out of the slot and all that so go ahead and get some good screwdrivers there you go a lot of people uh, you know use the, the little sets where you replace the tips I'm, I don't know I'm kind of funny I like I like different screwdrivers like that. okay separate ones all right is it working I think so so let's put some antler back in it uh, what else about it uh, like I say the micro groove it says it right on the barrel if a barrel is micro groove it's supposed to say it on the barrel Okay, just to let you know, as I've gone through that with some other Marlins, uh, one of the, uh, the, I don't know, the, not controversy, I guess, but issues with uh, some of the bigger bore Marlins is, should you fire cast bullets in a micro groove barrel? And a lot of people say, no, you should not. Uh, but I have a friend who has uh, several, I think, of the micro groove barrels, and he fires cast bullets. He has really good success with an accuracy. He doesn't have leading problems or anything. So, uh, you know, apparently it's not too big a problem. But with a 22, I, I can see why it but really, because these are essentially, you know, softer, you know, bullets. The lead, you don't really find, I don't think, many full metal jacket 22 long rifle rounds. Now, these are coated. They've got a little bit of a copper coating but it's very very thin and a lot of uh, 22s don't even have that okay yep, I remember that okay. there we go pretty neat pretty neat takes me back bolt release all right we got a few targets to finish off here so let's let's rack one in and take a couple of shots. This should be a really accurate rifle. I mean, with a 22 inch barrel, uh, if you could see the sights or if you put a, some kind of scope on it and bitch rested it, it's just no telling what you'd be able to hit. I see a little pot right there. That's one of the miniature sizes. Boom. Uh oh, there's a piece left. <laughs> Let me spin that thing. Cool. All right. Where are we missing? There's a tin can. I'll bet I can't hit it. Let's go ahead and shoot this guy. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Let's try Mr. Gong again. Uh, I just mainly like to throw some at him, you know, uh, obviously not much of a challenge. So the Marlin, uh, I guess I've shot it enough for now, uh, Model 60, a classic. I mean, it is a classic 22 rifle, and uh, we've had a lot of requests to find one, and I've been waiting because I didn't necessarily want to just borrow one. I wanted to own one again, and I like it. I like the feel of it uh, better than other very popular rifles that I own also. <laughs> It just feels cool. 
and uh, has a lot of history and a lot of you have probably uh, owned them and uh, maybe even grown up with them. So it is one of the one of the many really nice 22 semi-automatic rifles out there. Uh, gosh, a classic and uh, I am happy to have one back in the fold. Life is good.